was conceived sort of not as Seuss had done it in the book, just a series of little haystack houses, but I wanted to make it as a medieval village based around a town square, but instead of it, the, the central sort of the folks of the square being a fountain or a public thing, it was going to be their Christmas tree. That was the hub that the spokes of everything else sort of radiated from. Merry Christmas! Oh yeah, you bet. Uh, ho, 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 and scab. <laughs> oh my! Someone has vandalized that vehicle. What we began to do right away was sort of look at the roots of Dr. Seuss's view of the world, or point of view of the worlds he created. <laughs> what do you want? I mean, what? Oh, no. We had many, many conversations about how this world existed. And we're trying to flesh out something that is a line drawing. Michael Cornwell pretty much started with the architecture, and Seuss himself, or Theodore Geisel, had a lot of organic references. We broke down sort of his work first to see what his references were. As we look through the books, you can begin to see that he had a great love of medieval architecture. He also loved Moroccan and Islamic architecture, all the minarets and the domes. And so you could see a set of shapes that he was attracted to, and then you begin to see these shapes appearing in all sorts of fashion. Most Seuss buildings, they, they, they kind of have that odd, slightly skewed architectural design. And Michael Kornbluth built Whoville with that in mind. There were different types of buildings that were going to be part of this, so we knew that we needed a town hall. So I went back and really sort of looked at more sort of what the ideas or the archetypal ideas of civic architecture were and went back to more a Greek idea of this for their town hall. I felt there was going to be ceremonial things about it. Gee, look at the time. I really should be getting back. Ah, all right. <laughs> And then for the department store, for Farfingles, where there are a lot of scenes, I was sort of looking at the Art Nouveau shapes that he also used and imagined that it was an old Parisian department store. So each building had a little theme to it. Farfingles welcomes you. Thank you. Oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you for shopping, Farfingles. When we wanted to know what the inside of a Who house looked like, we turned to the one page where the Grinch is, is stealing Christmas and it says General Hulectric the refrigerator and sort of use that as a clue and say, okay, well, we've got to build more than a refrigerator. But the kitchen looks almost like a regular kitchen, but it's, but it's not. It's a who kitchen. I got it. I got it. Honey, honey, I got it. I got it. Hello? Is my Sub-Zero Chiller Breader running? Yeah. I suppose. Well, then you better go catch it! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our elements are completely manufactured. They're little curl cues and wiggles and, and susy motifs, which don't exist anywhere. But when I had to, to pick a material, I used a lot of Bakelite and celluloid. I really wanted those kind of feels. And I went to a lot of antique stores in the beginning and brought things back to the office and took them all apart into pieces. There's a whole room in the prop shop that's just stuff that, that me or some of my wonderful assistants would say, oh, that must look interesting. Let's buy that. And we just throw it in this room. And all of a sudden, you know, some wonderful new thing will emerge that they've made and all going, oh, that was a toaster. I remember that toaster. And it's come back in, an, in another life. Everyone was so intent on really trying to capture the essence of these things and be as true as possible. You know, not necessarily to the letter, but more to the spirit of Seuss. And I think that's really what we're interested in, trying to really kind of celebrate sort of all that energy and all, all the good things about uh, you know, the entire body of his work. The things that are really successful to me are the things that really look like a line drawing. When, when there are those little moments where there's an homage directly to him, those are, those are gratifying. He would not believe that you could take it from first his mind and then from his written mind and make it perfect.